no breaks for five years straight. I played with Lip Gloss by Lil Mama and Love on Top by Beyonce at every club. <laughs> and now they don't let me have the up <laughs> uh, Okay, today I just want to talk briefly about developing leaders uh, because I, I know and I believe that uh, if we don't spend a lot of time developing leaders, then we're not going to grow as a mission. Uh, I'd like to talk specifically about training leaders. Uh, and I know that there are times that we have like a thousand and one different things that we, we need to do. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes I think that developing leaders can, we, just, we take leaders for granted, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but when we do a good job developing, developing leaders, one, we have to do less. I think that's an awesome thing when other people are, are taking charge. Uh, and two, more kids are reached, and that's, that's the goal. Uh, good leaders can sometimes be difficult to find. Great leaders, I think, are even harder to find. And I don't think that Holland's hit that thing. We all have leaders that quit all the time. <laughs> And uh, sometimes we know it's happening, and sometimes we it's just kind of out of the blue. And I have heard, and as I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard, every reason and excuse on why someone needs to step out of leadership. And I really believe that a lot of those reasons go actually point down to the fact that people aren't confident enough in their faith to put it into action. Uh, I think that when we develop strong leadership, fewer people end up quitting too. So when we today when we think about growth, I want to think specifically about how we train our volunteer leaders. And to be completely clear, I'm going to be talking about something that we started doing in, in Holland. This is year two. Uh, but in no way do I think that we have this down. And that's because I think that training should be something that is reevaluated every single year and, and tweaked a little bit. Um, I have this whole list of things that I want to do differently um, now that we're, we're halfway through year two. And I, I know that not all of us work in a town with, uh, with college kids, but I think the, the bones of what I'm saying still apply. So I would often tell leaders that I want them to lead out of uh, their own faith growing, that they're leading from within, that it's an overflow of what Christ is doing in, in their life. And it kind of hit me that if I am telling leaders that they should be leading from their own faith journey, then should their faith development be more of a priority for them? So a couple summers ago, me and an intern from Hope, we spent the summer just reconstructing the way that we trained our leaders, but probably more importantly, the rethinking the way that we thought of training in general. And what we came up with was an uh, eight-week course, first semester, and during those eight weeks, we focused on three things, spiritual development, community building, and a little bit of young life. So the way that we would, that we plan a night for training is we want about 60% of the time to be dedicated to spiritual development, about 30% of the time community building, and then just 10% with, with Young Life material. And that's, what, how, that's how we would do the first semester. And the, the spiritual development piece came in the form of every week a different speaker would come in, some from Hope College, a lot from, uh, and some from just churches around the, the area, some who had Young Life background and some who didn't, um, some who knew about Young Life and some who really didn't know much at all. Uh, I gave them a specific topic to teach on and uh, I would even encourage them to not think about how they need to relate it to young life or to be, to be a leader, but just teach about the topic. From there, we go into community building. That comes in the form of just small group time. Small groups are led by current leaders, and they just simply facilitate conversations, uh, talking about what, they, what, leaders, what, what everyone heard that night from the teaching, and just to get to know each other better. Then the Young Life piece, that often comes in the form of raffle, mixer, or talking about like, some training videos that they were assigned during the week. Um, and what we do is we give everyone one of these packets, and I really want to redo this because this looks way too, like, it looks like a formal training packet. 
It's really designed to be more of a devotional than anything else. Everyone who goes through training is encouraged to use the packet during the week. And each week, uh, the, the questions and the scripture, it's all based on the same topics that they were taught earlier at, at training in hopes that it's going to build off of it and kind of reinforce things. After the eight weeks, it, uh, it just, like everyone else gets training, they have the opportunity to apply and to interview, but in no way is anyone pressured to step into leadership. For example, this fall, at the very beginning, we probably had 70 people show up to week one of training. Awesome. But I told them, at the end of the night, if you decide that you don't want to be a Young Life leader, you are welcome here. Keep coming back. Uh, a few people dropped here and there after week two, after week three, and, and so on. Uh, we ended up placing about 45 leaders. And in conversations that I had with some of the 20 that didn't go through and to become a leader, they still thanked me and said, this was an opportunity for me to find Christian community and to learn more about Christ. Uh, the ultimate goal for our training process is for, is for us to help college students build or solidify a foundation in Christ. That is the goal. The goal is not to train them to be the best young life leader they can be. Um, I want I want to build uh, this, this, this community of, of disciples that wants to put their faith into action. And if that action is young life, sweet. But if that action is something different, I, I, I want to be and I have to be okay with that. But part of the min our ministry for a lot of us is reaching college campuses. Even if it's not Young Life College, that's still part of our ministry. Um, Second semester, we meet once a month. We dive into the Young Life, Young Life stuff, how to do contact work, how to run a club, all of that stuff. But once they're already placed, uh, because I, I realized that there's so many leaders that they were taught how to write a club talk so early before they were even placed that by the time they're actually giving a club talk, it's kind of hard for them to, to remember things they learned their, freshman, their first semester of their freshman year of college. Um, but ultimately, I want to think of potential leaders the same way that I am asking leaders to think of kids, to value them as a person over the participation. Um, I believe that it is so important for us to think of our volunteers as people and as followers of Christ way before we think of them for what they do for us. If we truly believe that, that people lead out of their own love for Christ, then that has to be the priority. Um, if the quality of leadership grows, then I really believe that, that the quantity of kids reached continues to grow. Um, if we value people over the participation uh, and not just thinking about what they do for us, that's when I think that leaders truly thrive. And if we focus on building disciples, I think the rest follows. But ultimately, I want to have a significant impact in my community and developing and growing leaders is the best way that I know how to do that. So the question that I want you guys to think about is, what can you as an individual and you as an area do to value the people in your community over just what they're doing for you?